humans on the internet. Uh, this week, I am going to do a follow-up post on a written piece that I have up now on my Patreon page. And this is a public post uh, that anyone can view, whether you are a Patreon subscriber or not. I will put a link to that um, either in the video description uh, or below uh, in the comments of the video. Um, so go ahead and check that out if you want to see the full uh, version. I'm going to try and summarize uh, in this post, so I'm kind of reviewing some of my notes to make sure I don't uh, miss anything, but I still need to uh, move a little quickly because I feel like this, uh, the full thing is too long to go over in this video. Uh, so go ahead and check it out, um, and then um, I'm going to dive on in because I've I've got a lot to share. Uh, so, um, autism is defined uh, by social communication differences. Uh, and also, uh, medical professionals would say a tendency towards restricted repetitive behaviors. Or, you know, as I would prefer to say, um, a strong desire for order uh, and routine in a chaotic world. Um, you know, I organize myself uh, you know, with my daily schedule, I have, you know, the same meals, the same routes when I go to work or anywhere. Uh, I, I t tend to uh, stick with a pattern uh, and I don't feel that that is problematic. It helps me to make sure I don't accidentally overlook things um, or it just keeps me extra organized uh, because I really need uh, organization in my life. It's just something that without it, I just, the chaos gets to me. Um, so I'm hyper organized. Um, also, you know, a lot of di autistic people are diagnosed in childhood, childhood. Um, but however, it's very likely that, you know, maybe just as many autistic people are, are undiagnosed until adulthood. Um, especially those autistic people who learn to mask. Um, you know, the other thing that people don't really understand about autism, and I wish more people understood, is, you know, it's not something that people can grow out of, um, and it's not something that could or should be cured. Mm. Another thing, though, is uh, many autistic people, most autistic people, have some sort of sensory issue uh, in at least one or more of the senses. Uh, so any of the senses may be heightened or possibly dulled. Uh, that you know, dulled would be like the inability to sense cold, heat, or pain. Um, you know, having a high pain tolerance. I have a very high pain tolerance. Um, sometimes input that many people could ignore, like a noise or a, a light, uh, could be so intense for a certain autistic person that it could cause distress or pain for them. Or, you know, on, you know, thinking with autistic people, there are things that I might find are pleasurable sensory activities, uh, like bright twinkling Christmas lights, but that might actually be physically painful for another person with a sensory sensitivity. <clears throat> Excuse me. The other thing um, is autistic people tend to have a different uh, communication style. Uh, they have verbal and nonverbal communication differences. Uh, for example, differences uh, in the patterns of speech. They may be less verbal or more verbal uh, than their peers in early development. Um, and when I was saying speech patterns, uh, I, you know, that could be the lack of verbal speech or the use of echolalia and palalia in speech or verbal stimming. So those are just some differences. Also, you know, maybe a uh, difference in the tonality of the voice. Uh, I tend to sing things randomly. I just sing stuff uh, and I make little movie quotes constantly. Um, and the other thing is for me, uh, when I am like ordering food or something, people are always saying, speak up, speak up. And then sometimes, you know, people are like, Hey, you need to use your indoor, indoor voice. So it's like, I feel like my voice is never like falling where it needs to be. I have to like, I feel like I'm constantly thinking very hard about like, is my voice level appropriate? I think about that a lot during these videos. And I actually just remembered that I was kind of getting quiet, needed to pick my voice up. It's like, I'm actively thinking, Oh, where's my voice volume? It's not automatic. Um, 
And then I, you know, me, you know, as an adult, I've learned better etiquette. Um, but it's still, you know, if I am anxious or really excited, um, I can unintentionally speak out of turn um, or just speak over people. Uh, I can get really rambly. Uh, and, you know, that that's just something that happens to me even now as an adult. Uh, but I think when I was a little kid, um, yeah, I wouldn't let anybody else talk. <laughs> I wouldn't let anyone have the floor. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, and then, you know, body language differences I mentioned, stimming, um, you know, like my hands, like when they when I'm really excited, they flap with joy. And when I'm afraid, they like do different things. Um, uh, you know, sometimes it's just, I just real not realize I'm even doing something my hands are really busy. Uh, but you know, the rocking and the motion and the toe tapping, all of that, it's just kind of this natural ebb and flow of energy. Uh, and many autistic people just have stems, and that's just their, the way their body responds uh, to things in their environment, sensory things, their emotions, uh, and other things. Uh, so stemming is something um, that, you know, may, everyone does to some degree, but the frequency to which autistic people are stemming, uh, we stem a lot more. Um, the other thing is, you know, body pose. It's hard to explain, but you know, there's just these certain postures that are familiar. Like one of mine, like when I get really like, I do this thing, I don't know, and you can't, it's like this comfy pose. I say I'm like a little T-Rex or a little baby chicken, my arms in, uh, my T-Rex arms. I don't know. It's, I know it's not attractive, but it's really comforting for me to stand that way. Um, so if I'm relaxed, uh, or if I want to feel comfortable, I will stand that way, even in public. Um, differences in facial expression. Some people may, you know, appear like their faces aren't expressive enough to some people. Um, and then, you know, I, like me, I'm told my face is ridiculously cartoony and it's just too much for some people. It's just over-exaggerated and, um, freaks people out. That's my face. Sorry. I don't know what to tell you about my face. Um, but so like the difference in facial expressions. Um, and then the other one with that is, you know, differences in, or, you know, maybe potentially even a lack of eye contact. Um, I don't really like to give eye contact with someone unless it's a very intimate setting because eye contact is something that is very intimate. Like I'll stare deeply into David's eyes all day. But I don't want to look into anyone else's eyes, really. Um, most of the time, if it's someone else, I'm not looking at their eyes. I'm looking at some other part of their face. Maybe their eyebrows, if they're interesting. <laughs> or their nose, or their mouth. If it's loud, I'm probably looking at their mouth because I'm trying to, like... I can't lip read. I wish I could, but I can kind of... It's helpful. I can kind of lip read a little bit, but not enough to say I can lip read. But it's... It can help me guess what someone's saying if I'm looking at their mouth. Uh, looking at the eyes is just really distracting, um, and it makes it actually kind of hard to pay attention when I'm looking at someone's eyes, so uh, that's not what I want to do during conversation. Um, the other thing is autistic people, uh, medical doctors, will say, obsessed. Uh, they, you know, to quote uh, Autism Speaks, narrow or extreme interests in specific topics. Um, and, you know, people around can feel uh, a bit ignored because, the you know, it's like when I'm really focused on a problem, I'm really kind of in my own world. Uh, and I understand that because everyone around me is probably feeling a lot, a bit neglected because I can just be working on something and not realize a whole day has passed because it feels like it's only been like a couple, like an hour, a couple hours. Um, I'm just so in the zone. When I get in the zone, I am determined on fixing the problem until I fix it. And I think that's made me a really good problem solver. And so my question to that is, is obsessed or driven? Uh, because I, I think that that obsessiveness, yes, there are circumstances where it is not the best, uh, but in general, for me, I feel like that's one of my best traits. Um, 
the other. Uh, and so th those are just, um, you know, a few of the points I mentioned in the Patreon post. There are others, but this video is already at 10 minutes, so I'm going to cut it and encourage you to go read it. Like I said, it is a free post. It's open to the public. I'm going to put a link in the YouTube description, and I'm going to put a link on the Facebook video somewhere. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe because I do put out new videos every Wednesday. Uh, and I think if you are on YouTube, you need to turn on the bell notification uh, so you are notified when those new videos come out. Uh, thank you guys. I will talk to you later. Have a good week.